everybody, and welcome to the Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro, Massachusetts, home to Bishop Girton High School girls hockey this afternoon. John Collins with Tom King here on Nashua ETV as the BG girls hockey team gets to, ready to take on Salhegan, the Sabres, in Division I play. John, this is going to look like the Penguins against the Stars in the NHL with the uniforms. They have green, white, and this team, Salhegan, in the dark black jerseys Good with the point. gold trim. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, they're not quite as accomplished this year as those two teams are in the NHL yeah. because Salhegan comes in here 4-5-1. and one. They played everybody tough, but still have yet to be able to put together a whole bunch of games in a row. They suffered a four-game losing streak in the middle of the year in January that really hurt them a little bit. Girton, on the other hand, same thing. I talked to uh, you know the coaching staff. They can't believe that they're only three eight and one coming into this game because they're much better than that. They have a better team than they had last year in, in their minds. Name you're going to call right very often today. Girton's hundred point scorer Lindsay Hulk. We've done her in other sports. She's just as good in hockey, and she's she's what makes this team go. The other thing, the two goaltenders, Sarah King for Girton, Ellie Byram for Salhegan. Accomplished goalies in other sports that have played pretty well in this sport this year. Skate three is its usual frigid self, but you would expect nothing more in mid-February. Well, it's not a very big crowd right now because we're early. Yeah. The heat's not on here. I've gone down on the ice and shot photos for other games this year and walked by this area where we are now, and it's nice and warm. Now <laughs> we're freezing. Go figure. How about uh, the scoring ability of these two teams? Are they, they putting up a lot of points, or is it well, tough I, to come it, by? It depends on the opposition. Okay. You know, and yeah. that's it. You know, Halt, who's skating right now and looking you know, very good on the ice, will probably do a lot of it. Don't also, Brooke your Broody. These are all the names we've seen yeah. in field hockey, other stick sports, field hockey and lacrosse. Those types of players, they can score. Brenna DeFelice can score as well, and she can also play very good on the defensive end. If you're looking at Salhegan, they have a couple of players I like. I like Claire Woodford, the senior, number 11. If I'm not mistaken, she may be related to a Girton hockey player, a boys player. Okay. But yeah. I'm not positive of that. But Riley Tobin, number 13. <coughs> These are all, again, lacrosse, soccer, not lacrosse field hockey names that I'm used to seeing. So take a look at those players, Julia Ireland, some of these other players, Abby Hawks. Take a look at them, and we'll see how it goes. That's Tom King on John Collins. We're moments away from the opening face-off. Bishop Girton girls hockey versus Salhegan coming right up on Nashua ETV. Vengo de Honduras. Ya tenía 19 años y no tuve el tiempo de entrar a high school por mi edad. De repente miré un flyer donde decía, termine su high school y en letras grandes español. Dije yo, ¿será posible? Yo estoy muy orgullosa porque sí luchó por sacar su diploma. Este proceso yo creo que no lo hubiese terminado sin la ayuda de mi mamá y de mi hermana. La educación es muy importante y estoy haciendo un futuro mejor para mi hijo. Encuentra clases gratis para adultos cerca de ti en completatudiploma.org. We are ready for hockey at Skate 3 here in Tingsboro. The Bishop Girton girls hockey team about to host the Salhegan Sabres in Division I action. These two teams right next to each other in the standings in Division I girls ice hockey in New Hampshire. BG with a record of 3-7 and seven and Salhegan 4-5-1 and one entering this afternoon's contest. It's a Saturday, February 8th of 2020. Glad you could be watching. John Collins, Tom King, and our cameraman Tim O'Neill in the appropriately frigid confines of Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro. So a lot of firepower on the BG side as far as good girls that are good with the stick and able to score, and not only in hockey, ice hockey, but field hockey and also lacrosse. Uh, Lindsey Holt was number one mention that Tom had. There's other players, Brooke Jabruti, that could put it in the net as well. And so the uh, pressure will be on the Sahigan goaltender. Ellie Byram, the senior goalie number one, who skates between the pipes to stop 
some shots in this one if the Sabres are to come out on top as and, and maintain their superiority in the standings. It is the uh, Concord Crimson, the team at the top of the standings in New Hampshire Girls Division I Ice Hockey at 11-0. Immediate pressure by the Sabres off the opening faceoff. 15 minutes in New Hampshire Girls and Boys Ice Hockey. And BG trying to get the puck out of their own zone to begin the game. And they finally do shove it out ahead. But the Sabres quickly intercept. That's Claire Woodford, number 11, that was met at the blue line by defenseman Julie McLaughlin for BG. Carrying it down deep. Good pressure by Lindsay Halt. That shot was off the apron on the right side, it appeared. Good pressure for Bishop Girton's top line as they try to answer back the Sauhegan pressure in the game's opening minute. Puck is played up the boards and now it's a foot race to the corner. First to get it for the Cardinals is Mackenzie Husson, sophomore defender, number 11. Husson plays it around the boards to Julie McLaughlin. McLaughlin's got space to work with as she passes it toward the center, tipping it on down into the other zone. Could be icing. No, they're going to wave it off as the Sabres try to play it out of their own end, and they can't. Just off the bench, one of the co-captains of this team for BG, Brooke Yabruti, nearly got it in front for her teammate to have a whack at it. Brooke Yabruti, number five, will be figuring in a lot of the action, you would imagine, as the Sabres try to penetrate. First back to get it is Jill Scanlon, number 22, smartly. Ahead to Brooke Yabruti. Yabruti goes over the blue line looking for help over her right shoulder as she gets stick checked by Julia Pinkham, the defenseman for Sauhegan. The centering pass goes through everybody to the point. Great opportunity there, but no BG players saw it. Shot and a goal in front. BG gets the first goal of the game. It was tipped over the left pad. By 22, Jill Scanlon gets the game's first goal for the Cardinals. Great pressure. There was a nice centering pass, first of all, that came through the crease and then came to the near point. A couple of BG players got their sticks on it to get the puck to Jill Scanlon. And the freshman forward from Pepperell, Massachusetts, nearby here to Tingsboro, gets the game's first goal. So the Cardinals are up one to nothing. That goal coming just over two minutes into the game. Two minutes and change. Riley Malagonski and Riley got the assist for Bishop Girton. Brooke Yabruti, excuse me. Riley Molongoski, also a freshman, with Brooke Yabruti, the junior. The goal scorer was freshman Jill Scanlon. So nice teamwork by Bishop Girton to get the game's first goal. Easy glove save you saw there by Ellie Byram, the Sauhegan goaltender, to force a faceoff to her left. The Sabres win the draw and throw it out to the center ice area. BG's Mackenzie Husson had the puck near boards, then it was poked away. And down to get it for the Cardinals was, I believe that was um, their senior defenseman. A lot of these jerseys are all crumpled up. Doesn't make my life easy. Uh, that would be Lindsay Halt. Lindsay Halt was, of course, at the point, number 17. Icing called against the Sabres. So the faceoff will come all the way back to the Sahigan zone. Sahigan in the dark jerseys on the left of your screen guarding the net. Manned by Ellie Byram. And Sarah King, the goaltender, to our right for Bishop Gurdon. Cardinals setting up. Well, almost looks like a power play here. Ellie Byram makes a nice glove save for the Sabres. Some saber rattling by the saber fans here. They got those little um, noisemakers that look like two hands clapping together. You just have to wave them back and forth, and you get the clapping effect. Terrific save by Ellie Byram. I don't know how Ellie even saw that shot. A great wrister from the point. 
by Lindsey Halt, and that had some velocity to it, but a great save made by Aubrey, and she makes, Byra makes a second one. She throws the puck behind the net. The Sabres having difficulty coming out of their zone. And now they do, up the boards and out. Claire Woodford pushing it on ahead. She's got Callie McBride with her, number 14. Callie McBride centers it, but it's taken away by Lindsey Hull. You see Lindsey Hull's skating ability there, number 17 in your picture. I'd say she's the probably the best skater on the ice in many instances, and she's going to easily outpace everybody and go back to get this loose puck. Lindsey Hull winding up. She's only got two players to beat. Lindsey Hull, the right side, she's going to wrist it, goes by the net. Collected near side by Jill Skin, the goal scorer. Centering pass by Hull. She tried to find Brooke Yabruti. Instead, it comes all the way out to mid-ice. Two players battling for it, and Sauhegan comes away with it. Center ice, that's Abby Hawks, number eight. She plays it off the far boards, kept in by the Sabres. We're five minutes into a 15-minute period. Players collide, puck goes up and over the boards, and it'll be a face-off in the Bishop Girton zone. Some glimmers of offensive pressure by the Sabres, but for the most part, Bee Gees' top line has been very tough on the Sabres. Keeping the puck in the offensive zone, BG has had a lot of chances early, including the goal scored by Jill Scanlon two minutes in. Scanlon plays it up the boards, but not out. Woodford with the shot on the ice all the way toward the net. Mackenzie Husson sticked it to the corner. Now save is made by Sarah King as you see some actual shoulder checking going on in front of the Bishop Girton goaltender. Body checking is not allowed in girls ice hockey. So it looks like a juggernaut atop the standings much as you see Bishop Girton girls basketball dominate in their sport. It's the Concord girls hockey team that is far and away the cream of the crop it appears so far in 2020 with an 11 and 0 record. They are a couple of wins ahead of Berlin Gorham who are at 9 and 2 and then it's Oyster River 8 and 3 the top three teams right there. And that ball the ball that puck goes off the top of the glove it looked like a first baseman misplaying a throw there by Sarah King. But fortunately for the BG goaltender, it was a high shot. And it goes to the backboard. An opportunity shot is saved by Abby. Ellie Byram. Ellie Byram has made three, at least three, terrific saves here in the game's opening period. Or else the score would be very different than just one to nothing in favor of Bishop Girton. Claire Woodford weaving her way through traffic. Woodford takes a tumble. They're saying that she tripped on her own accord and there will be no power play awarded. Cross ice pass onto the stick and off the stick of Callie McBride. Sabres play it down into the offensive zone. We played six minutes of the game's opening 15 minute period. Under nine minutes left, BG looking for the game. Second goal, what ahead of steam by Lindsay Hell. She fires at the rebound, actually came right past Brooke Yabruti. She had a chance for the putback. Halt on the prowl again. Rister was labeled for the upper left corner. And a great save again by Ellie Byram. Stacking up the spectacular saves. She's kept Lindsay Halt off the scoreboard so far in this one and through no fault of Lindsay's own she's been putting the puck on net with quality snipes and just haven't gotten it past Ellie Byram yet only the goal by Scanlon Sauhegan's attempt to foray into the offensive zone fail foiled at the blue line and back again come the Cardinals Riley Molongowski Riley trying to shoot it toward the net instead she'll settle for the corner Jill Scanlon intercepts near corner battle of a couple of 22s in the corner right now Alice Serban is number 22 for Sauhegan centering pass as Byram tries to pounce on it at the post it's still loose in this crease and it's still loose pucks behind the net centering pass attempt snatched out of the air by Ellie Byram there'll be a face off to her left 7.29 to go, first period here at Skate 3 in Tingsboro. Bishop Girton playing much better than you would think a team with a 
a four and seven or three and eight record would be playing. Dominating so far four five and one is the record for Sahigan. So this would get them back to the 500 winning percentage mark. First to get it is Mackenzie Husson. Throws it up the boards to Allison McMahon. Allison McMahon cross ice pass nicely done. Onto the stick of Brianna DeFelice. Brianna DeFelice is a combination forward and defenseman, number eight for the Cardinals. Prowling in the middle right now. And oh, nearly a centering pass. It would have been one on one. Instead, the Sabres keep it in the offensive zone and keep the pressure on for the moment. Centering pass does not find a fellow Sabre, but puck bounces out of the zone. Good poke right there by Julie McLaughlin to send it into the Sauhegan zone without committing an icing. Kept in at the near point. Mackenzie Husson's going to throw it back from whence it came around the boards behind the net. Manning the post well is Mackenzie Husson, but Sabres managed to get it out and past her. And trying to break into the offensive zone is Riley Tobin, number 13 for Sal Hegan. She nearly created a scoring chance. Instead, back the other way come the Cardinals. Jill Scanlon in the slot. And Byram is going to steer it behind the net. So I'm going to credit her with yet another save there. Ellie Byram steering the puck away from the danger zone. And the Sabres managing to no Jill Scanlon intercepts the pass centering pass on net the shot saved by Ellie Byram again whirling dervishes Brooke Yabruti behind the net Brooke still has it centering pass it's right in front Jill Scanlon nearly had her second goal it was right there in the crease and she just couldn't stick it around Ellie Byram this is going to be an icing call and the faceoff will come back to Ellie's right. What a golden opportunity right there. Brooke Yabruti setting it up as she stick handled with the puck behind the net. Slid it from the far corner to right in front. Jill Scanlon had two whacks at it, but just couldn't get that one past Ellie Byram. 5.20 to go in the first period. Lindsay Halt with the puck. Wrists it on net. Goal! Lindsay Halt just throwing it at the net through a screen. And the Bishop Girton Cardinals have their second goal of the game. Halt, such a good player. You know, that really wasn't one of her most challenging shots that she threw toward the goaltender for Sal Higgin, Ellie Byron. But what that one had going for it is it was through a screen. And it went through all kinds of legs and sticks. And it found its way to the net and passed Byram. So goal number two for the Cardinals coming with just over five minutes remaining in the first period. We'll see if anybody else got credited with deflecting that in. Julie McLaughlin got the goal. And Lindsey Helt got an assist on the goal. So McLaughlin from Halt and Catherine Simpson. So two goals for the Cardinals. Well, I'll tell you what, John, this is more of a dominant game than I expected. BG has come right out from the get-go. You know, so he can win the opening faceoff, dominated for about a minute in there in, in Girton End. Since then, it's been all BG. It has. A flip, a switch has been flipped. Yep. And uh, the offensive pressure, the time of possession. Oh, is, it's unbelievable. And if we're not for Ellie Byram, it could be six to nothing right now. Loose puck, and it trickles past Byram as she cut down the angle in front. A one-timer by Halt, and the Sabres managed to clear. Four minutes left first period. Beachy with a two-goal lead. With a two-goal lead and a perpetual power play. It feels like Doesn't it. Doesn't it? <coughs> They have really put the pressure on. Now Sahigan at center ice shooting the puck into the offensive zone as Callie McBride pouncing on it. Sarah King is going to settle for a faceoff to her right as BG and Sahigan will get a line change. Actually, Sahigan settles for substituting one player. 
on the faceoff for the Sabres is Riley Tobin, number 13. She wins the draw to defenseman Julia Pinkham. Pinkham throws it toward the net. Mackenzie Husson for BG collected it, but she's not able to shoot it out. Into the corner it goes, centering pass, and Lindsay Halt is right there to intercept around the boards. This could be icing. No, the snow is going to slow it down, I think. He will call icing. Yep. The official. Now, he never waved it off. Usually they'll make a signal halfway through the puck's travels across the, the red line. 319 to play here in the first period. 2-0 Cardinals. It feels like 8-0 Cardinals. Do I feel heat? I think I feel I, that, that too. I'm looking around. I think I think I feel it. Yes, I feel it too. Very good. Very good. It's sporadic here at Skate 3, but we really appreciate it. Oh, when do it, we ever. When it comes. Two on one for the Cardinals. Oh, right Jill there. Scanlon has a chance for a second goal. Got it. And she gets it. Backhanded. Backhanded to the far corner. Just inside the post. Nicely done. Jill Scanlon that makes it a 3-0 lead. Inch, an inch to clear. Otherwise, it wasn't going in. 3.05, and it's a 3-0 Cardinal lead. What a nice execution on the two-on-one there for the Cardinals. And you'll hear who the assist came from. That was just... Your Broody on the assist, Brooke your Broody. <coughs> and it's just one after the other. Brooke Broody with the nice setup and Jill Scanlon with an equally nice finish. 3-0. So I'll, look for Scanlon to maybe get a hat trick in this game if she keeps going I'll at this you, pace. I'll tell you, Egan coach Kelly Braley cannot be very happy about this because this is not the way she likes her team, obviously, to come out and play. Lindsay Halt continues to demonstrate she's the best skater on the ice. She, she really is. Everybody into the corner looking for a centering pass for Scanlon and a nice clear uh, interception in front by I think it was Dara Estes number 15 the junior defenseman from Bedford now Holt's only a junior oh excuse me that's uh, Julia Pinkham for Sabres Holt's only a junior player. but she'll be playing I believe lacrosse at Holy Cross in another two years wow she's already I believe she's already committed So faceoff will come back into the Sabres zone. We've been looking left for just about all this entire period. All the period. time. Yeah, I expected to move down the ice during the first period to shoot some both sides and again, no, no reason to. Catherine That's Simpson won the faceoff right and oh, nearly walked in. Instead, almost. it's a clear by Alice Serban. Sauhegan, and it's icing. Sauhegan's got to be a little tired. It takes a lot more to play defense than it does offense. Right. You know, they right. need to get some forward checking and get, they need to keep Sarah King for Gurton busy. And I think right now they're just hoping to get through this final 145 of the first period without giving up another goal. You're right, John. I, that's it. And I didn't think it would come to that in this game. What do we have? Do we have the game's first penalty? I don't believe so. No, just a, a redraw. Faceoff was won by the Cardinals. Back to the point it comes. Julian McLaughlin tried to shoot it up the boards. Centering pass attempt. Brooke Yabruti had it in her skates, but saw he can able to dig it out and throw it out of the zone. Lindsey Hull first back to get it. Stick checked by Riley Tobin. The Sabres. Shoot it behind Sarah King. Around the boards it goes. Not out. Woodford there's, kept it. See, there's the, there's the attack right there. That's one of the first shots from the blue line that Sauhegan has taken in this game. <clears throat> now come the Cardinals. This is Allison McMahon. She's got a two-on-one. Yeah, on on. Brody chops at it. Not able to get a shot on goal that time. No, but they had a, they had a finisher skating down the middle. Weren't able to get it to her even after that play didn't work. And out of the, into the BG There's zone Holt. it goes. 45 seconds left to go. She plays it off the boards and out. BG trying to convert yeah. it into a fast break offense here. Bro your Broody weaving, shooting. And I'll tell you what was wrong with that play in a second. In front, actually that was Allison McMahon that shot it wide on the, on the rush. McMahon 
skated through three Sabre defenders to get that shot. That shouldn't happen if you're South Hegan. Right. Here's a turnover. And offsides. Oh, it looked like it was going to be a clear shot on King. Callie McBride had the puck, but Abby Hawks, <laughs> number eight, had not yet cleared the zone for the Sabres. So face off. Fortunately for BG, that was offside. That might have been a quality scoring chance. It's only 19 seconds left in the first period. A great first period for Bishop Girton. They're up three to nothing. As the teams trade possessions here in the neutral zone, 10 seconds remaining. And it looks like this is how the period is, is going to end with just some play along the boards. You know, I should have thought about this because Girton played Hanover to a 3-2 game. Really? Yes, up there. Oh, that's Which that's is really surprising. Yeah. So they are playing on top of their game right now. And it shows. We have played one period here at Skate 3. I'm Tom King. That's John Collins, Tim O'Neill on camera, Pete Johnson, our executive producer. And it's a 3 0 BG Lee. Don't forget, that second period after a period, things can change. So come right back for the second period right after this. Bye, Janet. It's nice seeing you See again. You, you a good girl. Just let me know what I can do to help. Well, to help me, she'd have to help every day. Every hour, every ouch, every time my wife calls for help. I mean, maybe she could help me make her lunch. But the crust, all the crust has to be cut off the corners. She could help me run to the doctor for the fifth time this week. Help me with the specialist and the second opinions and the painful paperwork about paperwork. Help me deal with how hard it is seeing my wife's name on so much paperwork but this is on me i'm the only one who can do this like this for her besides take care we will <laughs> janet doesn't like her cooking anyway find support for your strength visit aarp.org caregiving for care guides and community welcome back everybody to skate three arena in tingsboro john collins tom king we're about to start the second period bg sure got a great start up three to nothing over the sabers why well, and they'll be going now left to right on your tv screen but i saw kelly braley talk to her team and all she did was wave her arms the opposite way from our right to her to our left down towards sarah king over and over and over again she wants to see some kind of a sustained attack by the Sabre team. Yeah, they spent most of the first period in their own go, zone, almost. their defensive zone. They're trying to get something going right off the opening faceoff, as they did in the first period before the switch was flipped. And BG just dominated the time of possession, mainly because of this player right here, Lindsay Hull, who just took control of the game along with her teammates and kept the pressure on the Sabre goaltender, Ellie Byram. Byram forced to make a number of great saves. Three pucks got by her. And here come the Sabres with a two-on-one. With her head up, turning it into breakaway. a breakaway. The shot over the net, near side left. She missed to the left and up high. John, she should have directed herself more in the middle and given herself a better angle. Shot, and I don't think, I don't think Sarah King, King even knew it was coming. No. That was Claire Woodford, number 11, who had the partial breakaway and did not put the puck on net. Well, this is a definitely a different start. I mean, a different look for Sauhegan right now than what we saw the, the last 13 minutes of the first period. Starting off with a face-off going the other way <laughs> for a change. It'll be a face-off in the BG zone. Sarah King fortunate right there that that shot wasn't on net. Both the shot by Claire Woodford, and then the later shot, a few seconds later, by Abby Hawks, number eight, in the high slot. I don't think Sarah even knew that the uh, Sabres had stolen the puck there on that possession. Now here come the Cardinals sprinting down near oh, side. A, look at this. Two we had a deep right in. And Jill Scanlon had a chance for another hat trick right there. It was right a three-on-one, and the one for Sauhegan was all the way over against the glass. There were two forwards wide open in front of Ellie Byram. A defensive breakdown by the Sabres on that play, and they're fortunate. No goal, and there's a shot over the net. Boy, that could have been 4 nothing easily. You're not going to get an opportunity like that. A wrister goes over everybody to the far diagonal, and the Sabres are first to get it. And they slide it out of the zone, but right back from where it came, 
as Allison McMahon shoots it behind the Sabres John, goal. I saw this Sauhegan team back just before Christmas. In fact, two days before Christmas. And they had a lot more spunk and energy than they're showing today. Sabres trying to get on the scoreboard. Bishop Girton has had some terrific chances. You got to be careful on those blue line passes because they can be easily be intercepted for break-ins. No goals yet here in the second period. As <clears throat> Mackenzie Husson shoots it around the boards. Brooke Broody plays it off the boards and up. Oh, and it's oh, and there's we're our get a penalty. No, they waved it off. That's a ridiculous non-call. They waved that Tom. off. I can't believe it. Yeah, that was knee-to-knee -knee contact, it looked sure like. Sure was. That's uh, that's really interpreting the rules somehow. I don't know what the official's thinking. Calling it accidentally. Literally waved it off. The Sabres with it. The shot is blocked in front. Far diagonal and the... Cardinals are the first to get there. That is incredible. I'm still thinking about that, too. Like, what's the reason it wasn't called tripping? Because some trips are accidental, yes, but there's still that a trip. That wasn't accidental. No. I mean, she wasn't trying to trip her. She was trying to check her. And there's right. no checking allowed, so and why? It, and it turned it. Right. Exactly. There's no checking allowed, so why? There was contact on the play. you got to call it. They didn't do it. Yeah, that was close to a check there, too, but there was stick on puck contact by the Sabres' Claire John, Woodford. in my mind... And this is no slight on girls hockey. There's no excuse for missing calls on the part of the officials because the pace isn't as fast. You know, it's not as fast as boys hockey. You're right on top of every play. Great There's point. There's no excuse for it. Great point. The BG fans were actually looking for another penalty. And there could have been illegal. right there. There could have been right there on our, to our left. Most hockey games, just if they're played with any kind of intensity at all, penalties happen. And if you're almost halfway through a game and there's no penalties and yet the pace is intense and players are banging, you almost wonder what, why isn't there any penalties? Well, and, and in girls, don't forget, in girls hockey, the rules are different. There's no checking sure, allowed. Sure. So with no contact, there aren't going to be as many penalties. You know, most of the penalties in the boys game go from contact. So I can understand why there's not a lot of penalties. But when there's contact, it's you've glaring. Take, yeah, you've got to take yeah. a look at it. <laughs> Sabres with some possession here, but BG keeping the pressure on in the offensive zone. Jill Scanlon and Brooke Broody were changing, uh, trading the puck. Keeping it in is Riley Molongoski. She's got a, a couple of assists in this one. And the Sabres come away from the scrum in the corner. Good stick work there by BG to keep it in. Puck comes all the way back to the point. The wrister through traffic actually hits one of the defensemen, Claire Woodford. Yeah, that was going to be tough for Holt to get that through. Yes. That is Holt. I can't tell. Yeah, the, the, the jerseys um, are all crumpled. They're all crumpled. <laughs> so I can't tell if it's 13 or, or 17. Yeah. Looks like it's Holt, but... It is near point. That's Lindsey Hult. And yes, that could have Hult. been called, Tom, against yeah, the I Cardinals. Know I know it. Yep. That was actually a good play in the boys' game. But however, shoulder checking to body somebody else. Oh, look at this. In alone. Shot. Goal. Goal. Julie McLaughlin gets a loose puck just inside the blue line. And she makes the Sabres pay as she throws it about waist high to the far corner. Well, that's an off a turnover. Yep. So I think it turns it over, and you get a break in and a good shot high to beat Byron. Julie McLaughlin, the sophomore forward from Merrimack, makes it a 4 0 Bishop Girton lead. And it will probably, as Tom said, be unassisted with 9.38 remaining in the second period. BG with their biggest lead of the game again, of course, at 4 0. And Sal Hegan still left with a goose egg on the scoreboard, desperate to get something going offensively. That's icing against the Cardinals. 
So faceoff will come down to the left of junior goaltender Sarah King. Scott Cizik is the head coach of Bishop Girton with assistants Phil DeVita yeah, and talking Greg to Scott, Holt. Talking to Scott before the game, he said, Save, oh, there's goal. a goal! Yeah. Right off the faceoff, Tom, and right on the spot was Riley Tobin to get a much needed first goal of the game for the Sabres. Credit the faceoff win to set that up. Well, great save by King, a kick yes. save, but the problem is the rebound came right to Tobin and she put it home. Great goal by Sauhegan. They needed that to come back and start to jumpstart their team. Let's see what effect that goal has on the remainder of this period. Sauhegan's got some good fan representation here in this Saturday afternoon contest, and they got oh, loud they on that it's right one. The area, so right, it's sure. Not that far from Amherst. Lindsay Hult trying to answer right back for the Cardinals, and she does get it out, playing it off the boards. Olivia Harnish got the assist on that goal. So Olivia Harnish was the one that took the faceoff and shot the puck right. right at Sarah King off the faceoff. Right. King made a really nice right pad save, but it was a perfect rebound. Here comes Holt down right wing. Holt trying to take it deep. Around the net, still had it. The centering pass off the backhand was intercepted. I was starting to say before that goal, that Scott sees it, and there's another contact play, and this time there will be a call. Loose puck. Sabres got some possession there. The yeah, cross check penalty. is going to be called. I talked to Scott sees it before the game. He said part of the problem with his team this year, why they've only won three games, is A, they had a tough schedule at the start of the year, but B, they've been inconsistent. Played a couple good periods and then had that one bad period. Yeah. So that's why a 4-1 lead, if you're playing like that, it's never going to be safe. Case in point to what you just said, they lost to the 11-0 Concord team by a score of 6-5. to five. And you said it was a game that they thought they could have won. Yes, in fact, they said they, they thought they should have won it. Oh, save is made Great on a save deflected by Byron, shot. A deflected ball and puck in the air. She's had to make a lot of nice glove saves, especially power play for the Cardinals. Coming off a of first period where Tom said it looked like they were on the on the power play from the beginning to end, but now they have an actual power play. And Byron forced to make another save there off the faceoff with the puck near corners. Callie McBride, she can't get it out though. Halt's waiting. The wrist are through traffic. Club How saved did Byram. Byram see that? At the very, very last oh, second. Oh, no doubt about it. She reached down. She's got uses her left hand for the glove. She reaches down and just grabs it before it crosses the line in midair. Another nice save by Byram. Halt gets the face off, slides it across. That's Dara Estes. Her shot is blocked by Riley Tobin. Another oh, shot gets through. Save Byram. That was a change of pace shot that almost handcuffed Byram. Lindsay Halt will just shoot those wristers through traffic every once in a while. It created a goal earlier. It was credited to McLaughlin. Halt, one-timer, stopped by the defenseman in front. And the puck trickles outside the zone. Lindsay Halt will shoot it, well, she'll skate it right back in. Rister from the bad angle off the apron to the rear board. Sabres with a chance to poke it out, and they, and they do. do yeah. 101 left to play in the penalty. 709 left to play in the period. It's a 4-1 game. Brooke Yabruti on the attack, slides it back to the post. The wrister is blocked in front. Oh, an opportunity for someone to pounce on that puck, and no one got there in time. Julia Pinkham with a nice block and clear for the Sabres, and the Cardinals will have to regroup. Halt with a great pass up ice from her teammate, Dara Estes. Around the boards it goes. Jill Scanlon, who's got two goals already. Oh, shot just almost a third, a backhander that just bounced across the crease. That's about the fourth quality shot that Lindsay Halt has had that Byram has stopped. Somehow they've kept, oh, they, they blow a whistle. What do we have? Offside. I don't know. It was, obviously, Byram had stopped playing right there. It was a puck. Deep, I think the stick above the shoulder. Stick above the shoulder, and then that creates a faceoff back in the defensive zone for the Cardinals, who are still in the power play for the next 17 seconds. 
draw will be taken by Brooke Gabruti. She wins it. Lindsay Helt shoots it up the boards. And here comes Catherine Simpson. Simpson shot, blocker save by well, Byram. Simpson had a skater coming down left wing and chose to shoot it. Rister through traffic. A couple of players got a stick on it, including Lindsay Halt in front. First to get it in the corner is Julia Pinkham for the Sabres. Intercepting Zabruti. And that's it for the power play. So we're even strength now as the shot goes wide. It's back to five on five. Four to one. Bishop Girton leads here with 5.45 to go in the game. Uh, second period. Here's a break in. Off the oh. end of the stick of Riley Tobin. What do we have? Penalty coming up against the Cardinals? Looks it's going to be a yeah, slash. slash. And it looks like Dara Estes is going to go. She was the defenseman that was trying to catch up as Riley Tobin was right in front, had the puck trickle off her stick, and I think Estes took a slash at her. When you're trying to catch up in this sport, you're almost probably 65% chance of a penalty. You do see penalties committed all the time in those situations. Gary Bishop, the BG boys coach, will always tell you, you got to move your feet. You move right. your feet, you can stay out of a lot of bad situations. And moving her feet right now, Allison McMahon able to skate it out of her own zone and shoot it down behind Ellie Byram. So that takes about a half a minute off the penalty kill. First back to get it is Brooke Yabruti circling. Neutral zone. Number nine, Avery Caravas for Sauhegan. Not able to do much with it, though, as the Cardinals intercept and shoot at the length of the ice. Power play for Sauhegan. They're down by three goals. Key moment in the game. They surely, surely would like to cut this down to two on this possession. Spin move by Caravas, but holding it calmly, Halt's going to launch it the length of the ice. <laughs> a full minute left to go on the Sabres power play as Jill Scanlon pursues. Yeah, Scanlon a little back check, but now she's left the team. Julia little... Pinkham yep. on the move. Pinkham won the beat. Save oh. is made by King. And the rebound was there to pounce on. Great rush by Julia Pinkham, but the Sabres can't keep the pressure on. No, the rebound was right there for Abby Hawks, but she just couldn't get a stick on it. Halt steps up and intercepts. Delayed offside, but BG will tag up. Scanlon's back check caused that breakaway. She should have just skated up the ice as fast as she could. Julia Pinkham, who just had that brilliant rush, trying oh, for nice another move. one. She's going to shoot it. No, she still has it in front. Pinkham gets broken up. Boy, Pinkham left about three Girton defenders in their way in her wake. Look at the hustle right there by Catherine Simpson. A full length of the ice sprint. And, and the power play is up. Lindsay Hull cruising like a shark in the water. In front. Oh, almost a one-timer goal for Jill Scanlon. I think that would have been the hat trick. Another chance in front. Was it number 21 for BG in front? Tessie Wilkie. It is Tessie Wilkie, number 21. That pass was intended for. The shot goes over the net. Now they're trying to beat Byram high. Yeah, number 19 for the Cardinals is Julie McLaughlin. She oh, there's a backhand chance right in here. In front, saved by Byram, point blank. Great pad saved by Byram. As there was a backhand opportunity, it was the only way to shoot it was with the backhand to get it off quickly, and they did. And Byron was there, equal to the task. 2:50 left in the in the second period, four to one in favor of BG. Byron is making a run at uh, at least 20 saves at this point in the oh, game. Oh, she's got more than that. I think she's got about 24, 25. And, and those are quality saves. Most of them are high difficulty saves in, in great goal scoring situations for the Cardinals. Another puck goes into the BG bench. 244, two minutes, 44 seconds to go in the second period. It's uh, been an even Steven game. You look at the goals in the second period, 1-1. Scanlon shoots it wide of the goal. <laughs> Jill Scanlon 
ends up with it behind the net. Now the uh, Sabres, Claire Woodford around the boards. Serbin, Alice Serbin, number 22, battling with Mackenzie Husson. PG defender falls down. Yeah, Allison on her McMahon own. She hope wasn't he's okay. Hit. She's fine. She got right back out. Loose puck in front. She's and fine. Jill Scanlon skates it out. Thought for a second she was grabbing her arm, but she didn't. She's got Allison McMahon on the wing. Claire Woodford breaks it up. Takes a tumble. Gets it out of the zone, though. And Brooke Yabruti. Offside. Did. Jill Scanlon just couldn't clear in time before Yabruti broke across the blue line. 1.47 to go second period. Next goal is critical. So he can scores it, they're back in the game. Curtin scores it, they pretty much give themselves a nice cushion. Yeah. Be back to a four goal cushion. I think the Sabres have to be more desperate right now. They need a goal before this period ends in the next 1.38. Curtin steal, the wraparound try. Yeah, Byram is wise to it. Yeah, good job to protect that side. The only danger is if you get the pass across the crease. Julie McLaughlin creating a scoring opportunity there, number 19 for the Cardinals. Halt plays it off the board. Smart smartly. play by Halt. She couldn't get the shot off, so she knew to keep it in, just get it off the boards. Intercepting the centering pass was Abby Hawks for the Sabres, but the Cardinals steal it right back. Around the boards it goes, and again keeping it in. Bishop Gurton doing a good job of keeping the pressure on. <coughs> Sauhegan finally gets the puck out of their own zone. And they have a break. Allie on McCall nope. broken up at the blue line. Good yeah. job by BG to get back. Brooke Yabruti going one on one on the left wing. Backhands it toward the goal. Good stick check save by. Right. And you know Byron. who got back on that play job was Holt. Holt is all over the ice for this team. Does all the little things that help out this team right now using that great skating ability of hers. Here she goes again, intercepts, took a pretty hard accidental body check, but bounces away from it. Contact in the far corner. Jill Scanlon with the blind centering pass. Hulk collects the loose puck. She's got a shot. traffic. Hulk shoots another save by Byram. Two on that play, John, it was a rebound. Directs that one to the corner. Byram on her way to 30 saves in this game. Loose puck goes right through the crease. And that'll do it. Hot All and heavy started action. with Holt chasing the puck in the corner and then coming right back, circling back, and getting that shot on net that started that little flurry. All those things tend to happen in succession, and that's off of one play. You said that the Sauhegan team needed to score a goal before the period would end, but to credit BG, they never let them get out of their own zone. And that's that's a credit to Halt setting the tone and the rest of this BG team playing a pretty good second period to stay even after all that momentum that they had in the first period in a 4-1 in a, in a game right now. So one goal apiece, that was it in the second period. They played pretty much even Steven on the scoreboard. What will the third period bring? John I don't Collins? know, but we've got Kelly Braley talking to the officials right now. I wonder what that's all about, but we'll see. And we will see here on Nashua TV, third period action coming right up. Thank you. No problem. Just like the rules to surviving Zombieland, there are steps you can take to be prepared for an emergency. It's the right thing to do. Talk with your family to make a plan. Look for safe areas to meet up if separated. And stock up on supplies. It's never too early to get prepared. So start now. Right now? Right now. You can't predict emergencies, but you can be ready. You're welcome, America. Visit ready.gov today to learn more. Welcome back, everybody, to Skate 3 Arena in Tingsboro as we get set for third period action. Second period between Bishop Girton Girls Hockey and Sauhegan. Much different story than the opening period when the Cardinals took a 3-0 lead and just dominated the puck completely. In that second period, they ended up 1-1, and that produces the 4-1 score as we go into the third and decisive frame. 1-1, one one, John, but again, Girton dominated in terms of time. Yeah, they time, really did. I, uh, Ellie Byram was the reason why this that was This game is only 4-1. Exactly. Right. So 
We'll see who gets this all-important next goal. As you said, it'll be a very different game depending on who gets it. Exactly. Bishop Girton in the offensive zone, but they can't connect. And Lindsey Hell's going to have to win this foot race against Riley Tobin. She does. Plays it off the boards and out. Nicely done as it ends up on the stick of Olivia, uh, excuse me, Julia McLaughlin. McLaughlin's got a goal in this game. Loose puck near the blue line, and the Sabres get it out. Another opportunity to regroup for Sal Hegan, who have been on their heels for much of the game. They did get the, the, the most recent goal. Do we have a penalty? Yes, it's going to be a power play for the Sabres. A tripping call is coming up against the Cardinals. Well, I'll tell you, I just, that didn't look to be nearly as bad as that tripping that we saw in the first period. Not at all. Or the second period, rather. But it's going to be on number four. Allison McMahon goes to the box, and it's a two-minute advantage for Sal Hagen, a golden opportunity for them to make a game of it, down by three to start the third period. The faceoff is won by the Sabres. Back to the point it goes. The wrister. Oh! Goal! Wow! Uh-oh. Julia Pinkham for Sal Hagen just threw it toward the net. And it went right. It sailed right. It was a knuckler. And King couldn't time it, it went right by her. So it, what seemed like a simple wrist shot, kind of a lob from the far point, knuckles on King and goes past her. And we have got ourselves a hockey game. Four to two. This is a Bishop Girton team that lost by the Number one team in the standings, the 11-0 Conquer team by a score of only 6-5. to five. And they lost to Hanover, another great team, and a, a nail-biter, right? 3-2? to 3-2, to two, yeah. And they don't want to let this one get away. But it's now a, a situation where Sauhegan has scored a couple in just a two-goal game, and anything can happen. So here comes Claire Woodford, who's been stalwart for Sahegan in the first two periods. Just a classic example of throwing the puck at the net and letting something happen, and then something did. It was a great job by the Sabres. Claire Woodford goes to the full circuit here with the puck all the way around. She's back to the point, wrists it toward the net. She had a winger, Callie McBride, standing there. McBride tries a centering pass, intercepted by Brooke Yabruti, who weaves her way past two Sahigan players, and BG clears, but it's going to be an icing call. So faceoff will come back to the right of Sarah King. 15-minute periods in boys and girls ice hockey. We played just about two minutes here in the third period, <laughs> and an auspicious start for Sal Hegan a trail four to two after they get the first goal of the period. Face off one by the Cardinals. <laughs> Olivia Harnish gets her second assist of the game. She also assisted on Sal Hegan's first goal of winning the face off. And she does it again. I thought, oh, I thought um, Riley Tobin got an assist on that too, but she didn't get credited for it. And that's, that's Riley Tobin right there, number 13. There's a puck right this. in front of the crease, and BG fortunate. Yeah, that now see, this is an example. This is the consistency Scott Cizik was talking about before the game. And here's Saiga with a great job of forechecking and keeping the pressure on in a 4-2 hockey game. Deflected shot by Claire Woodford nearly found its way to the net. Shot toward the uh, goal. And if a crisper pass had been made for a one-timer, that would have been a goal. Riley Tobin was the, on the receiving end of the would-be one-timer, but pass was off to the side, and here come the Cardinals. Lindsey Helt with a full head of steam going around the defender, the wrister. Great oh, save! And a wide open net. Juicy and rebound, rebound went wide. for Julie McLaughlin. Oh. She could not convert. She and had a wide open net and shot it just wide. How about the solid save by 
Ellie Byram, but uh, With another the rebound went to the wrong direction. That's a goal. You've got to score in a game like this. We've got Byram for roughly 30 saves, and I think 10 of those shots have come from Lindsay Halt. She doesn't have a goal yet. There's a shot by Halt. Another save by yeah, Byron. Halt with the turnover at the blue line. I want to say that Lindsay Halt's got about a dozen shots on goal. Players vying for the puck just inside the Sabres blue line. And then sitting on it is Julia Pinkham. BG digs it loose. Delayed We're offside. Outside, yep. Cardinals tag up. Sabres do get it out of the zone. Gurton's got to get back to its four checking ways. And I don't know if they're going to be able to the way Sahagin's playing. BG whiffs on it and trying to draw a penalty there was Abby Hawks who went sprawling. Right, and that was a good job by her to try to draw it. But a good ref will not make that call. Lindsay Hull from a tough angle. Another save by it's Byron. Another shot. And Sahagin gets the puck out of the zone. Brooke Yabruti circling. One Flores on into the zone, the backhander, no teammate to pick it up. Halt yes. is at the point, she keeps it in. Yeah, Sidesteps the defender, Halt in the high slot, the wrister, save again by Byram. That might have snuck under the crossbar. And Halt is already the first one back to get the puck, circling. Lindsay Halt, the Baker's dozen worth of shots on goal, but no score to show for it. Thanks to the great goaltending of Ellie Byram. <laughs> Halt shoots it They're in. They're going to need Halt to get off the ice soon just to give her a breather. She logs a lot of ice time, doesn't she? She sure does. BG has it in the offensive zone. The centering pass finds Riley Tobin's stick. Halt breaks it up, though, and keeps it in. What great play at the point by Lindsay Halt. BG still with the puck in the offensive zone. Julia McLaughlin goes back to get it, tries to center it. Keeping it away from the crease with this nice stick check save was Emmy Byram. And Nine, so he can clear as they ice the puck. 9.20 left in the game. And the faceoff will come back to the Sauhegan end. Gurdon starting to put on the pressure that they had in the first period. That's Tom King. I'm John Collins. Our cameraman here on Nashua ETV is Tim O'Neill. We're at Skate 3 in Tingsboro on a Saturday, February 8th of 2020. It's a good game. And again, the pressure is on Sauhegan to score the next goal and really make things tight. And every, every shot that Byram saves gives Sauhegan another opportunity to get that all-important next goal. The Cardinals have not yet scored here in the third period. They went from 3-0 first period 1-1 one, one second period. Now weaving in front. Good stick check is made by Olivia Harnish. Well, you wondered when someone from Sauhegan would do, make that play because the skater was right in front, able to move from the wing all the way in front of the net. Walking right in. With the puck, Allison McMahon goes around the boards, but Riley Tobin for Sauhegan's first there. Tobin is always around the puck, isn't she? Yeah. A lot of touches. Yep. Allison McMahon Line shoots change. it in. Line change for the Cardinals. Some fresh, fresh skaters bodies, on yeah. the ice. Let's see how this works out for them. Claire Woodford with some really nifty stick handling to get around three beachy players. She's going to get a shot on Woodford goal Woodford shot and a save by King. Wow, that was a tremendous effort by Claire Woodford, who finally has it taken away from her, but a teammate for Sauhegan has it. Loose puck in the slot, cleared away by the Cardinals. Lead pass, trying to collect it. Jill Scanlon making a bid for a hat trick. Instead, icing is called. Uh, I guess play. that pass was on this side of the red line. Great play by Sauhegan on the wing. Knew she was going to get a, a shot off. Sauhegan's got better skaters than they showed in that first period. That first period is killing them right now. It is. It's the difference in the game, it clearly. Really is. Yep. Three goals for the Cardinals. They could have had more. Byram with some terrific stops to keep it three to nothing after one, but it remains the difference in the game. <coughs> BG almost a potential two on one. Knocked <laughs> down by Scanlon. She's gonna pass it, she might have shot it, but she passed up the shot. You're right, Scanlon had a shot, she passed it up. 
Should have taken it right from about 25 feet out. She tried to pass to the Brianna DeFelice, but DeFelice was marked in front of the net. She was not Look at Holt. open. Offside. South Hegan players don't like the fact that Holt shot the puck after the whistle, but technically not illegal. Just one of those unwritten hockey rules. Holt will irritate you. <laughs> she has done that to opposing teams. 7-10 to go in the hockey game. BG. In, in just about every sport she plays. Yeah. <laughs> you, you see her play, so you know. Around the boards it goes. Steal for BG as Sowigan gets a bit sloppy. Backhander in front. Oh, and just in front. And it was a rebound chance, and it went wide. Dara Estes was standing there in front of Emmy uh, Ellie Byram and just couldn't get it over the Sowigan goaltender. Around the boards it goes. Collected by Julia McLaughlin. McLaughlin backhanded centering pass. Blocked. Knocked. Blocked in front. Sabres desperately trying to get it out of their zone and they can't. Kept in near boards by Catherine Simpson. Now Sauhegan gets it out, but pouncing on it is Halt with speed across the line. Go! What a sniper wow. shot! by Lindsay Holt, and that's what it took to finally get one past Ellie Byram. Well, she pounces on the loose puck, as you said. Another turnover by Sal Egan, and Holt wastes no opportunity. You've got to figure, with all the shots she takes, one of them's got to go in, and this one did. And that NHL wrist that you referred to is yeah. very sharp. An NHL skills competition quality shot there <laughs> by Lindsay Hult as she went top shelf just inside the post and just underneath the crossbar and finally eluded the very fine catching glove of Ellie Byram on, on what may have been Lindsay Hult's 15th shot on goal in the game. She gets the game's fifth goal. It's a 5-2 BG lead, a big goal right there with six minutes remaining. Instead of a one goal game, had Sauhegan scored, it's now a three goal cushion for the Cardinals. Looking for more. Halt is going to launch another one. It's deflected in. And it goes in. Oh, my goodness. That might have been credited to Brooke Yabrudi. I believe she redirected it at the far point. We'll wait to see what the officials think. But Lindsay Halt so effective with that <laughs> wrister from the point again. 6-2, to two, BG on top. And now, yeah, now a victory would seem all but assured. Yeah, I think Saig is going to have a tough time with 5.47 left. Having only scored twice to this point. Lindsay Hull back to get it. Puts the brakes on. Nicely done. And she creates a cross-ice pass right onto the skates of a teammate. Allison McMahon, unfortunately, BG, a little disorganized going over the blue line, get called for the offside. We'll wait the, I think we are owed two goal scoring announcements. Yes, we are. Both involving Lindsay Holt. This is the fifth goal scored by number 17, Lindsay Holt. Unassisted at 8.43. Well, there you go, the unassisted, unassisted number five goal of the game. Here goes Riley Tobin. She's got a player in front. She didn't know. Wraparound try saved by Sarah King. A Sauhegan player gets decked, and the Sabres fans wanted a penalty. There was none called. Your Broody did get the goal, Holt with the assist, and there was another player. Simpson got the other Simpson, assist. Yep. yep. A Sauhegan player collapses on a stick, and do we have a tripping call against the Cardinals? Yes, we do. No need for that with 4.52 no. left in a 6-2 game. Claire Woodford felt the stick underneath her and alertly went down, and it was a fairly legitimate tripping call, even though the BG player released the stick. The Sabres will be, have a one-player advantage here for the next two minutes, unless they score quicker than that. Down by four with 4.52 remaining. Sabres win the faceoff. BG fighting for the loose puck. Claire Woodford plays it back to the point and Julia Pinkham shot into traffic in front. Puck still loose. 
BG clears it away from the crease for the moment. Stopped at the point. Julia Pinkham shot on goal. Sarah King saves. Centering pass is blocked. <coughs> Julia Pinkham, who plays defense on power play, often calls for the puck at the point. She likes to shoot it. It was a good shot, but Sarah King made the save. 125 to go on the power play for the Sabres. Julia Pinkham with it. Fire boards. Cuts to the middle. Across the ice they go. Sabres stay on side as they go across the blue line into the corner. Pinkham's centering pass is blocked. And shooting it out in the length of the ice was Riley Molongoski. Minute gone on the penalty now. Claire Woodford with it. Claire Ooh. Woodford runs into a player. Incidental, they call. Right. Claire Woodford again. She's a good stick handler. What do we have? A player goes through the boards. Yeah, they, they had the player went through the boards and the gate opened up. To the uh, visiting penalty box. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody didn't latch it, I guess. So that causes a stoppage with 48 seconds left in the power play for Sauhegan. Only 3.39 in the game. A four-goal lead for the Cardinals. That 3 nothing first period lead that they put up still looming large here in the third. Brookie Brody poking at it, able to stop Julia Pinkham, and Brody, in fact, takes it away. A wrecking crew in the corner. Brookie Brody wants a tripping call there. She looks around as skates tangled, but she didn't get it. They let him play. And here comes Pinkham. Julia to the near boards. It's going to shoot it toward the goal. Sarah King almost allowed it to go 5-0. King should have used her stick on that yes. play. That's what it's there for, right? Exactly. Slow yeah. shot, roll it in, just whack it away. It's like trying to catch a bullet between your teeth. You don't want to. You don't want to go there. Let's get that stick down. 3:03 left. A four-goal lead for the Cardinals. Face-off in their own zone with only 10 seconds left on the power play for the Sabres. They launch one. Goes off the apron to the right side. Keeping it in is Pinkham. Rister <coughs> trickles through traffic, and Sarah King only saw it the last fraction of a second. BG clears, and, and that, that might be an icing call. They didn't realize yeah, it was. Yeah, because the penalty was up. 2.43 remaining. I think hockey fans are gearing up for some uh, Bruins Canadians tonight, is it? I'm not sure. No, the Bruins are hosting Arizona today. Arizona. In a day game, 3 o'clock. Oh, three, it's going on now. Yep. As we record this. Poked at and collected by Claire Woodford, who's such a good stick handler. Look at her go. She's done this several times in this game. One of the key players for the Sabres, but the Cardinals break it up. And two on one. Back the other way, a clear two on one. Shot goes wide, centering pass attempt. Brookie Broody trying to draw a call. The backhander goes over the... Net, you can see some tired legs out there right now with Boy, two minutes left no in the doubt game. About it. The pace of the game has slowed dramatically off the boards and out. So as the two teams battle for the loose puck, it looks academic at this point. A 6-2 to two advantage for the Cardinals and a turnover in the neutral zone. BG forced to clear and tag up. Loose puck near boards, collected by Julia Pinkham. Cross ice pass to Woodford. Her up ice pass attempt is intercepted by Abigail Richard, number seven for the Cardinals, battling with Woodford. Abigail doing a good job of wreaking havoc in the offensive end with just over a minute to go. Centering pass. Chopped at by Tessa Wilkie, number 21. Here comes the Sabres, but easily crossed the blue line to intercept was Lindsay Held. Good defensive play by Lindsay. Again, under a minute left to go. 
Sabres trying for a last ditch attempt here. They don't go with any icing call. Lindsey Hult weaving her way out of the defensive zone. This will be an icing call with about 40 seconds remaining. 39.2 make it. Bishop Girton girls hockey coach Scott Cizik and his assistants Phil DeVita and Greg Holt have to be happy with how their team played this afternoon here at Skate 3. A dominant 3-0 lead in the first period that has held up for the duration. A little bit of a scare there for BG when the game became 4-2 here in the, early in the third, but they got two goals for some extra padding. 25 seconds remains as the team skirmish behind the BG net. So Hegan keeps it in for the moment. Loose puck, high slot. And the Cardinals are uh, out of the zone with it. Jill Scanlon, who still has an opportunity for a hat trick, but only 10 seconds remaining now. Great game for her. Five seconds, and this will do it. It's a 6-2 victory for the Bishop Girton girls hockey team as they improve their record with a fourth win on the season. Sauhegan will have to settle for a four and six and one record as they depart skate three this afternoon. For our cameraman Tim O'Neill and my partner Tom King, I'm John Collins thanking you for watching. Congratulations to the BG girls hockey team on a 6-2 victory here hosting Sauhegan this afternoon and good luck to both teams for the rest of the season. Good night from skate three everybody.